Hi team. So in this video, we're going to be exploring two things, how the purchase of inventory flows through the three financial statements, and then how the sale of a product or service flows through the three financial statements. And because we're dealing with inventory, we're going to be focused on two types of companies, a reseller and a manufacturer. We'll explore that in a little bit more detail down the line. But for now, just know that we will be doing the accounting for a reseller. And as an example, I have this inflatable dinosaur that I purchased from Amazon. I actually purchased two of these. The other one is right behind me. So if we were to use Amazon's balance sheet to account for this, it would result in an increase in inventory and a decrease in cash. So basically you have a debit to inventory and a credit to cash. So with that journal entry, let's take a look at what happens on the financial statements to record that transaction. And just before diving into the financial statements, let's take a moment to explore what's happening in this workbook which will be available for download just beneath the video player. Across the top, we have our journal entries for the purchase of inventory, the sale of the object to a customer, and the collection of payment from the customer. And then beneath that, we have the financial statements, including the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement, as well as three small supporting schedules for accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable, which are currently grouped. And you'll note that in period zero, we're starting with a balance sheet that has a cash balance of $1,000. So now we can revisit the journal entry for the purchase of an object for sale, which is to debit inventory for $1,000 and credit cash for the same amount, which you will see reflected on the balance sheet in period one below. And in addition to the changes on the balance sheet, you will see that the resulting increase in inventory which is a working capital account, is reflected as a cash outflow on the cash flow statement below. Next, we'll move on to the sale of this good to a customer, which is me. And we're going to say that Amazon actually gave me terms to buy the product. They never would, but it'll make it a little bit more interesting. We'll just make this video really spicy. So basically, here's how it's going to work. When they sell this to me, the company can recognize revenue. In this example, this results in an increase in both revenue and accounts receivable. The journal entry would be to debit accounts receivable and credit revenue. Next, we need to match the cost of the sale with the sale itself. And this is a good opportunity for a visual that demonstrates this process. Whether the company is a reseller or a manufacturer, once a sale is made, the value of that good transfers from the balance sheet to the income statement. So the cost of producing the good or service is matched with the sale of that good or service. The journal entry for inventory would be to debit COGS and credit inventory. So next, let's take a look at how this flows through the financial statements. On the income statement, the recorded sale for $2,000 will be matched with the associated cost of the good, providing a gross margin of $1,000. Next, on the balance sheet, accounts receivable increases by $2,000 to reflect the customer's promise to pay for the good purchased, and inventory declines to reflect the sale of the good. Down below, retained earnings increases by the amount of net income. And you'll note that to keep it simple, we've assumed a tax rate of 0% just to allow these numbers to flow through the financial statements, which is why retained earnings grows by $1,000. Next, the cash flow statement will start with net income of $1,000. Changes from working capital will be equivalent to negative $1,000 to reflect an adjustment of negative $2,000 from the increase in accounts receivable and positive $1,000 from the decrease in inventory. Consequently, the ending cash balance will be zero. And just to be clear, these working capital accounts link to the balance sheet above. So in the same way that an increase in accounts receivable would reflect a cash outflow in a financial model, here we are doing the exact same thing. And then finally, in the third period, the company would collect payment from the customer. The journal entry to record that transaction would be to debit cash and credit accounts receivable. So again, all of this takes place on the asset side of the balance sheet, and we can look at the financial statements to see how it flows through. At the conclusion of three periods, we are back to a positive cash balance, and the accounts receivable balance 
is reduced to zero to reflect collection of payment. And then on the cash flow statement, the reduction of accounts receivable to zero from a prior balance of $2,000 creates a $2,000 cash inflow. And before I let you go, I want to point out that I formatted this so that you could see all of the balance sheets in succession. If you group all of the journal entries across the top, and then group the associated rows for these journal entries, you still have a note for what's happening in each period. But I think this format makes it a little bit easier for your eye to follow what's taking place. So hopefully this template will be useful to you. The final thing I want to point out is that if you look at this model, which obviously isn't actually Amazon and this dinosaur didn't actually cost $2,000, is that from period zero to period three, there's no cash on the balance sheet. It's only the book in balance sheets in our hypothetical example that have cash on the balance sheet. And what's really important about that is how you manage your working capital can make all the difference as a company. It's actually been said that Amazon does an incredible job of creating the equivalent of float, which is what Berkshire Hathaway does, except with better returns. I'll cite the article below in case you want to read it yourself. And in the next video, we'll show you how they use accounts payable and their incredibly efficient selling platform to create this additional liquidity, even as they're buying inventory and making sales. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.